This is Super Hang On for the Sega Genesis. Now this was made a couple of years after its big brother converted from the arcades. That is an absolute beast of a game. Thankfully I'm not running that because it is way harder. One thing about this game, it's a super scalar game and what that means as you notice in the demo here is that you are always in the centre of the screen and the uh, track is rotating around you but it also means that sprites will increase and decrease in size as you see here depending on how close or far away they are. One advantage for that is I'm going to be able to overtake things by accelerating through them, cutting across them. But one interesting feature of this is that there is no racing line, really. So what I'm going to be doing is trying to stick to the inside of every corner as best as I can. We're going to go through every course in the arcade mode. We're not doing the original mode. That would take shinty six years. It would not be a good idea. We're going to start off in Africa. Nice six stage course. Nice and easy. And we're going to go through all the music in this game as well. I should also point out there is a bounty on this game at the moment, which I've put up myself. The next person to get 31099 or lower in this first course will get $310. Also, there are three new runner prizes of $160 and $30 for the next three runners who get top times. All you have to do is literally just submit a time and you could win money. I would love to see a lot of you take this game up makes a nice 12 hour challenge. So once I get to 280 kilometers an hour, I am tapping the turbo button to try and stay on the inside of the course. I don't want to collide with any bikes, that's gonna cost me a couple of seconds. One thing you will notice is when I get to the end of the sector, there's gonna be a sector time shows up, but the fractions of the second carry over between sectors. So when I want to find out my actual time for that, I do need to remove those from the calculation. Just a small little bug that we found a couple of years ago, which seems to be present in every version of the game. So that 46 there, the game is counting that twice, we're going to take that off. And at the moment the world record for this course is 310.9, that was the first ever 310, I managed to get that just a few weeks ago. It was a heck of a grind, I have to say. A little bit of a whack there, you see I lost a bit of speed, that's not so bad though. One thing with this game as well is that different emulators handle it very differently. Today I'm using RetroArch because it seems to give me a bit less problems with my CPU. Generally the top runners use BizHawk even though it runs way faster than console. Now that's just a preference they have really in terms of it's more natural. but. Also, there are two revisions of this game, so in this version you're going to see fake Marlboro signs, bridal stone signs. Revision 1 has those removed, and it also has slightly different steering. Just take a whack from another bike there, that's a bit of a shame. But that means that it's slightly harder to stay on the inside of corners in that version. Most top runners prefer revision 0, because as much as it speeds up, it also slows down when there's a heck of a lot going on on screen, which makes it slightly easier. For the uh, bounties, we're going to ask you to use emulators. For any general runs, you can use whatever you want. Now what I did there is a little in-clip, which is where you basically say, this radius corner is very sharp, and I'm going to get thrown out if I'm not careful. So I'm just going to go the inside where there's no obstacles, and then I'm going to give myself an easier time to get a higher exit speed coming out. And the exit speed coming out of the corner is the really important thing, because if you get that, it's going to multiply into faster speed through the whole thing. So we're coming up to a bit of a radius change here. I need to make sure I know where it is about now. Because otherwise I'm going to get thrown way to the outside. And then we've got another big interlock coming up here, depending on traffic. Yellow bikes will tend to cut across you right to left. This is a bit dangerous. Yeah, I couldn't quite get that. Oh well. Green bikes will tend to move the other way, and as we go up the courses into America and into Europe, even this position I'm in here isn't exactly going to be safe, they're just going to come at me, basically. And this is a very reaction-based game. You know, you can learn the courses, you can know what you're meant to be doing in theory, but when it comes to practice, like there, <laughs> I had to react very quickly to avoid being thrown into a sea of arrows. That would not be a good time. Crashes cost five or six seconds quite easily. But even the top players crash all the time in this. And if you want to look at an example on the speedrun.com leaderboard of a really good smooth runner, look at Defang Devilon. He makes it look very easy. 
he never crashes into anything, he's very calm about it. I'm much more on the raggy end of things. I tend to just go at it and try my best and throw myself into it. I mean, it took a long time for me to get anywhere near decent at this game. It's just like, it takes a lot of effort, it takes a lot of heart. As we back into the arrows there, because somebody whacked us into them. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> Made me look like a fool on TV. Fantastic. What's the button to revoke these guys' super licenses? Anyways, as we get into Sector 6, we're going to get some more awkward corners, some wider corners. So after this corner here, there's going to be a very wide S, where I'm going to actually try and clip on the inside of it on the first part, like this, because otherwise I'm going to miss the turn in. So that went fairly well, because I've got 280 already, and I can turbo up. I don't know about the rest of you, but when I had this game when I was younger, I didn't actually know that you could turbo. So I tried in vain quite a number of times to complete it, and I simply couldn't manage. Just break down there, because I didn't get quite to the inside. Break a little bit to avoid that tree pass some oil drums. And as well as tapping the turbo button, I'm also moving left and right and letting go of that sometimes just to maximise my position. That's the first course done with already, so we're one quarter of the way through the game. And the time you see on the screen here, you're going to have to take about two or three seconds off that to find out exactly what the time was. Three twenty-seven. that's not too bad with a crash. So really that's more like 324 to 325. And if you just do the basics, don't crash, go on the inside of all the corners, you will easily be able to get a 320 something time in this first course. Now coming up is Asia, that's my favourite course. That was the one I got a first world record on, but it took a week of solid rage. And when I say a week of solid rage, I mean controller throwing, yelling, just pushing myself to my limits. It was so much stress, but oh boy, it was worth it. It's also going to be the course where we hear Sprinter. Such a great track. And you may know or not, this game was programmed by Yu Suzuki, and he was the guy who made Shenmue on the Dreamcast. And in Shenmue, you can actually play this game in the arcade. Nice little Easter egg they put in there. So again, with this being Super Scalar, I'm going to have to stick to the inside of the track at all times. It's like athletics, really. There is no racing line, but it does, in some cases, pay to go to the outside of a corner. Or, for example, to accelerate out of a bend, like we're going to do here. Because we're switching to a left-hand turn. And the higher priority is just to get a good exit speed. I'm just going to let go of C for a moment there, just to get a bit of skid control. Try and avoid all these adverts here. And as you go up the courses, the corners are going to get more severe, you're going to get more challenges with the IR bikes. I'm just playing on normal difficulty, I'm not really a masochist, I don't want to give myself too hard of a time. We've got a long, long corner coming up here. Almost go whacking into the uh, side there, that would not be a good idea. And the idea here is going to be to stay to 2.30 to about this point here, and then just accelerate through. Let go of the direction button very, very briefly on the adjoins between S's, because there's actually a tiny little bit of straight between halves of a corner, and it can throw you off, because if you do it wrong, you're going to go whacking into one side or the other. Just keep tapping the turbo, and if you notice the speed is showing 322, 324, it does make a difference, actually. If I just tap at 305, for example, it will end up making me much slower. So coming into a lovely pink cityscape here, and there's going to be an intrick coming up which was discovered recently where I'm going to try and go between two lampposts, but it's dependent on the position of the other bikes. Now, 90% of those are coded into set positions spawn-wise. 10% of them, it depends on how fast you've come into an area. So I might have to back out of this, but we'll see what I can do. Because oftentimes the bikes hog the apex because they're greedy. No, this looks okay. In we go. And then break to the right amount. Hopefully don't get thrown out of the corner. Yep, that's good. <laughs> and then I'm, I'm paying attention, but then I whack into a lamppost as well. Blooper reel. Nobody's perfect. Even the top players crash sometimes in this game. It's fairly reset heavy. You just take your lumps and move on, basically. Yep, 
You can even crash into the goalposts in this. I'm going to try and do that at the end of one of the races just for a laugh. Just a deliberate ink clip there. What matters with that one and many of them is to be holding the direction button at the right time so that you join the merging of the kind of angle of the corner, like here. You don't get thrown out too wide because that kind of undoes all your work. And you've got these fake Marlborough signs. They were removed in the second version. Personally, I think they look really nice. And of course, remember, this is back in the days when Sega was known as an arcade powerhouse. They hadn't really broke through with Genesis yet. Big whacking rate bend there. It was only really with the Genesis that they began to become popular because Tonka Toys had mismarketed the SMS in North America. But they took something like a 45% market share in Europe and in the USA. So we get through here, and now we've got a corner over a hill. So again, that one it's very easy to react to early. You'll notice that I tend to stay on the inside of corners to go into them. I'm strange because I tend to react too quickly rather than too late. It's just a function of various amounts of caffeine. But these little bushes, these shrubs, they've got horrendously large hitboxes. They are the bane of your existence, especially in America and Europe. This corner is easy to react too quickly. For example, one palm tree, two palm trees on the outside, that's when I can turn in. That, I don't so much mind, just as long as I don't whack into any scenery. As far as popularity, this game is not quite as popular as its cousin Super Monaco Grand Prix, but we do have a loyal little hardcore fan base on speedrun.com. It doesn't really matter what emulator you use, just don't use Fusion, because Fusion is horrible. As we go past some bird bird signs, maybe that's a tropical drink, maybe it's a sports bar. We're coming up into the desert section. This bit is awkward, and on certain parts, this is where I'm going to start doing something called... Okay, let me pass, please. Sometimes you hold the direction button, it won't actually let you get impact with it, because... The programmers of this very cleverly included the uh, weight of the bike in the calculations. So if you notice, if I change direction now, there's a bit of a moment's gap before you get the lean. American Bush, I couldn't possibly comment on that. Coming up to a section I like to call crossing the road, so you're going to notice here that there's a load of bikes on my right. They're going to get closer and closer. I'm going to let them all cross onto my left now. Then we've got a really nasty treble apex left-hander coming up. One, two, and three. It's very easy to overshoot that and you end up with low coming out speed of here. And then eight is quite technical, you've got a lot of sharp bends, rocks to avoid. This is definitely an area that the world record run could save some time in because it's very difficult to get a good run to this stage and be lucky enough to get through here. You know, you see the amount of bikes I've got to get past, and if you just slightly miss your braking point, you're going to get thrown out super wide and you've suddenly got to correct and scramble. Now these two lower courses aren't that bad. This one's quite fun and fast. But America is where it starts getting really difficult. There's going to be some concentration moments there for sure. Because as much as you can learn these courses, it is often about judgment as well in terms of knowing when to give yourself space on the inside and the outside, knowing when to back out of corners, knowing when to gamble. And believe me, that America course took me easily a week and a half to complete when I picked this up for the first time. It's a whole other level. Now we come up on 9, which is just this long sweeping left-hander, and because I said this is super scalar earlier, one implication of that is that if I'm on this halfway line here for the entire game, I'm losing time relative to being on the inside, 
And if I'm on the outside line, I'm losing the same amount of time again compared to being in the middle. So every millimetre that you can stay inside of the centre counts. And it's easy to get suckered into just trying to be on the inside of absolutely everything. But you do have to pick your battles, especially late into a run when you're trying to get something very special. Another big corner coming up here. There we go, that went pretty well. Another thing with the scaler is the perspective shift. So, particularly when you get up to 280, like here, you've got a snap suddenly of like... You feel like you're suddenly going straight and you've got a bike coming right at you. This is going fairly well so far, though. Don't be surprised if I still crash a couple of times in America and Europe. It's just one of those things. Now, let's see if I can get on the inside of this corner. Do a bit of tax and spend. That's pretty good. So tax and spend is just C and A. It's just what I refer to as when you're accelerating into and then breaking before the start of a corner, just to make sure that you get the inside line. And there'll be times when you actually want to get to the inside part of an S before it even begins, like on the like, go early, just to make sure you've got time to react. That was pretty good. We've got a nice crowd here. We've got a lady coming over to give us a kiss. Why not? And I believe that was 5.55 with a crash. That's not bad at all. So we're halfway through the game, and now we're coming up to the awkward part, because this is where all the memorization in the world will not help you if you don't have the judgement and the ability to react on a dime. We're coming up with the most iconic song in the game, Winning Room. Love this song. And the world record for this course is down at 7.58 at the moment. It was the first ever sub 8 minute time, and... About five, six more seconds can be knocked off that. That is something I'm hoping to do in the future. You might also notice, if you look at the skyscrapers, they've got the exact same logo that was on the ones in Asia. So you've got to wonder in this world, did somebody actually take over the entire planet? Like, is there some megalithic corporation that organises these global races? Crazy. Can I get on the inside? Just about, yes. I'm going to be doing a lot more turbo tapping here just to make sure not only that I don't go careening off, but I've got time to react in case I make a mistake. It's similar to throttle stabbing, really. And there I'm, again, trying to get it early on the half of the S to make sure I've got time to react and change my position. Now, if you want to look at a runner who's just absolutely smooth as hell, Defang Devlon is your man. But we've had a couple of other new runners come in recently, so Barsi came in and got a 3.12 in beginner, almost straight away, which is phenomenally good. Smegted got a 3.14. But the most ridiculous run of this game I've ever seen came from Ferox83. He did a 10.33 in Expert. He didn't take a single hit from another bike. It is singly the most impressive thing I've ever seen. You've got to watch it. I scratch my head at how he did that to this day. I, I just can't play like that. Now at this point, there are some corners where I'm going to be going from the outside. Part of that is to give myself reaction time against overreacting. Because they're very big breaking zones like that. There are also going to be times when I'm going to throw a loop. So instead of going right straight into the corner, I'm going to take a bit of a left first to, again, give myself more reaction time. I mean, it's horses for courses, really. Most people are probably going to benefit from going on the outside entering corners. But I just got used to going from the inside. One thing with the uh, features of this game, though, there is no penalty for weaving on the straights. So I can do this, I can do this. It's not actually going to slow me down, which is a bit of an anomaly, but when you know about that, it's pretty helpful. A little bit of slow down there, that's no problem. Here, this is the sort of area where you've got to be very careful to get on the inside of the straight very early. Because, like I say, with the way the amount of sprites the game's processing, pushing the Genesis to its limit, it is very difficult to inch along, inch along on these straights, either without losing ground or whacking into obstacles at the side. 
That's another reason as well I recommend controlling your position with the D-pad as well as the C button. If I do this, you can actually control your speed with the B button as well, but we haven't found a use for it yet because it's hard to control, particularly at the top speeds. Now, if you're just doing a float, oops, that was close. If you're just doing a float, for example, that big left-hander at the end of six in Africa, for example, it's not so bad doing that because it's at lower speed, it's easier to control. But generally speaking, you just want to be using the turbo and letting go, pressing back on it. A little bit of deliberate clipping here because I've got bikes on the outside of me and I'm going to be pushed to the very edges of the corner, but I need to be able to react both ways in terms of pushing to the outside with speed or going on the inside. And if I'm at 280 already, I'm not going to really be able to do that. As we see some adverts for a CD here, looks like Ludwig. That's not too bad though. It's very easy to miss your braking zone in these places because the other bikes tend to hog it. It's a game of millimetres really. And again, it's about picking your battles. But I picked this game up about three years ago and like I say, I had tried it when I was younger but I hadn't realised there was a turbo because I didn't have the manual. And I thought, well it's Christmas, I'll play a few different things, I'll see if I can complete the first course. I was able to and I just carried on with it and stuck with it. I love it. I mean, I've been playing Super Mario Kart when I was younger, so I guess I kind of got the yen for time trials. It is very different because the AI bikes do make a very big part of this game. You know, much more than other bike games, other racing games maybe, except with the exception of like Road Rash. But it's got a charm all of its own. I mean, the graphics, you can't fault it. You've got that blast processing, obviously. And remember, this was before Sonic the Hedgehog. So a lot of sports conversions, a lot of beat-em-ups. And this was included on a couple of compilations as well, so a lot of people remember this fondly from their childhoods, going into the desert. Coming up, we are going to have one of the most severe bends in the entire game. Do a little bit of braking there. That's a particularly difficult S-Bend to navigate without running traffic, so that went well. So this is the most severe bend in the entire course. This one is nuts. Are you ready? All the way down to 90. And then wait for that rock clip in a little bit just to make sure we don't get thrown out of the corner. Move around. And then section 8 is really cool. It's fast, it's flowing. There's a massive inclip where it's, it's basically like, if you look at the letter C, just imagine drawing a line in the inside of that and you're going to give yourself a quicker path you're going to be able to keep a higher average speed it's just sort of little hacks like that that make this game tick really the good thing is because it's quite modular like that you can choose what you use and what you don't there we go that's pretty much perfect so if you're not confident with certain parts of the course you can find your own way he said running off that's not actually part of the strategy there don't do that at home. <laughs> Oop, that was close. So now it's going to get really difficult because there's going to be a lot more awkward corners. I'm going to have to concentrate a bit more. And I let go of B there just to make sure I break enough and even then I'm nearly getting thrown to the edges. But there's going to be crested hills, there's going to be awkward palm trees. This is going to be awkward. Starting with this fella right here, a massive right-hander. And then we've got some form boxes, we've got some guys on the outside. The outside becomes the inside, we've got a snap of this guy going slowly. This is definitely a game you need to be on top form to play well. You know, drink your coffee, basically. And uh, just trying to break against knocking up those people. Sometimes those bikes will knock into you and they'll send you the opposite direction and you very quickly got to press the opposite direction on your joypad just to make sure you don't go into a tree. Here's another one. Just avoid that bush and we break down heavily because there's a kick to this corner.
So if it isn't posted in the chat while I'm doing this, once I finish my run, I'll post a link for you guys in the chat for the bounty description for this. And you'll be able to go and look at that and see what it's developed. But literally all you have to do is complete a run on the first course of this game. And that runs until the new year. And the 310.99 or lower bounty runs until the 1st of May, so you've got plenty of time to get into it. Do a bit more warping here, try and give myself a little bit more time to react. I don't want to get a bike up my snooze. And you can see that these bushes line the entire of the track now. Let's see if I can get through without crashing, that would be nice. Oop! You see I'm getting thrown left and right already. Definitely the last four sections of this you start growling, whether you're a tongue or not. Illusion corner coming up here. So because of the way the corner changes directions, you tend to accelerate and then you tend to whack into one of these trees on the left. And then the same with this fella here. Because you're braking so severely, you tend to overreact. Coming up to a long flowing right hander here. Again, it's like cross the road. You've got bikes coming from all directions and you've suddenly got to decide in or out, in or out. This is going far better than anticipated anyways. Again, you see that deceptive little bit of straightaway between the halves of an S, which can really knock you off, because if you over or underreact, the game's going to punish you. I suppose I'm lucky, really, because one of the first games I speedran was Mercs. That's a ridiculously hard game, and if you can do that, you can do this. The one thing actually I've got left to do in this game is to do 150% runs of every course. I've done it for the first three, but I haven't done it for Expert yet. That's going to be a heck of a challenge. I just, I did that for a bit of fun really, just, you know, why not? But if you think this is fast and difficult, you want to check out the main version of this, it's bonkers. In that, you basically crash and say, thank you sir, can I have another? Because it is so, so fast and so difficult to avoid anything. We've got some super wide corners here, and you deliberately want to be breaking before the half of the corner begins, so that you can change your line, because if you go on the line of these bikes here, you, you pretty much can't do anything about it, once you're kind of locked in. But if you brake a little bit earlier and be sure to tap the D-pad and change your track position, you can pretty much get on the inside, get a bit of inclipping, and avoid all the obstacles. This is going pretty nicely. So because this is a slower speed area, it's easier to whack into bikes because of the whole size of the sprites, positioning. Nearly done. And then coming up is Europe. Europe is just a war. It is absolutely out there on its own as one of the most difficult things you can do on the Genesis. I will put that out there and say that. And as far as learning this, it, it's similar to learning piano cycles and things like that, but, you know, it takes a while because the game programmers have very cleverly designed it. So certain parts, you think it's going to do one thing and then boom, it does another. Like when we get to the Netherlands in section 9 and 10 in Europe, there's a bit where there's a whole bunch of left, right, left, right corners, and then it thinks, you, you think you're going to have a right and it turns out to be a left and it tricks you. We've got an old man coming on here with some confetti. Lovely little scenery there. In the arcade game, the old man is actually the bike rider, which is a real shock when you finish it for the first time. In this course, the carryover is typically about seven seconds, so that's about an 807. That's a really good time. I'm pleased with that. And fun fact about this game, 
if you type your name as SEX, the game will actually change it to NAO because it's like a censorship thing. So, just a little fact there. And remember, stay with us here on the Sega Crew channel because coming up we have got a Sonic R Relay race back with Oazrim. We've got a couple of days of all sorts of different games. And I actually tomorrow will be back running Lemmings. And I know what you're thinking, Lemmings isn't sport, but hunting them is. And we'll certainly be doing plenty of killing of them. Anyways, this is bonkers this course. It's tight, it's demanding, it's a killer. You know, if you get a time under 11 minutes on this, you've really achieved something special. And we've got a subscription there, I think it is. Thank you very much for subscribing there or following the channel. Forgive me, I can't exactly see what that was, but whoever you are, kapla. Welcome in. So again, one of the advantages of running this on emulator is there's going to be some speed up and slow down, which is going to make it tremendously easy to handle certain parts of it, because you need the reaction time, you really do. some bridal stone signs there again those were replaced in the other version of this game it's one of the ways to tell which version you have I speaking personally actually I would love to see a construction kit of this game made but I know that there's a bizhawk shuffler out there it's like a randomizer if somebody made something that randomized which section you got after each section that would be fantastic I'm going to have to be very careful here to try and get on the inside of these corners because you'll see how the uh, other bikes love to just come in and cut you off. And it's going to get brutal. You've also got far less margin in this uh, course for like trees on the outside and things like that. There's going to be an inclip here. You notice there I didn't press right so rhythmically I lost maybe an inch of ground and it made a big difference being thrown out to the edge of the corner like that so it's it's not just about speed it's about position so the really good run is the run that says I'm gonna go balls out for about 12 13 sectors and then I'm gonna play it very carefully because sector 13 onwards there are so many awkward points in it and there are bits where you can be aggressive but you've got to pick your battles really like any speed run And I don't know if our man Shim Gabriel is in the chat, but Shime runs Super Monaco Grand Prix. I personally would love to see you and anybody who runs Outrun, for example, pick this game up. It'll be very interesting to see the differences between them. I personally find Outrun quite difficult. I don't know why, it's just something to do with the perspective of it. It's got more hills. And Super Monaco Grand Prix, how you guys can change gears up and down all the time and not mispress things is beyond me. Because I've got the advantage here, up and down don't do anything. So I'm just literally just pressing four buttons and that's it. And this flip has a crest of a hill and traffic, so I'll just tap C a little bit, make sure I keep control. But I've got to give another shout out to Defend Devil, and he was ahead of his time with this game. He's held all four world records, he makes it look easy. His streams are just fantastic to watch, he's a great guy, I definitely recommend you check him out. He's hoping to get back to uh, racing this sometime soon as well, but he does a number of other projects on Sega. A little bit of an inclip here, try and get round this bit, because the throw on this area here is quite severe, that went pretty well. And your friend of mine, Anthopants, the King of Streets of Rage, has also run this game. Coming in with a very respectable time around 11 minutes. If he can do it, so can you. Just pick it up and give it a go. It works great as a 12 hour challenge. And if anybody's interested, I can make a tutorial for it as well. Although, 
Suffice to say, there's not that much to learn. It's mostly a question of do your homework. You know, what helped me was to take the sectors in pairs, so one, three, five, seven, nine, and just practice over and over again from realistic save states. You know, put yourself in difficult situations, you'll learn far more. And then don't be afraid to go aggressive and to document your runs on a spreadsheet. Work out where it is you're crashing most often. And then just take steps around that to remedy them. It's breaking here just to avoid being thrown out. If I get through this course without a crash, I'll be very pleased. This is the sort of thing where this course makes everyone look like an idiot. Because there are times you'll have four or five crashes, you can't do a thing about any of them. And then there are times you'll have four or five because you've had one and you just momentarily lose your concentration and it cascades. that because I was on time with that uh, turn point, I was okay not to get thrown out. Bit of an interlip coming up here as we roll into the low countries. Windmills are plenty. Yeah, that's not bad. And then after this we're going to be coming up on the night section. That is just literally a nightmare. Because everything is so much more pinpoint in terms of how you handle it. See that I overtake somebody by being on the outside of the man going slower than them. If you can work out how that happens, answers on a postcard. Because I certainly can't. Not that I'm complaining. Nearly got whacked into a tree there. Thank you very much, AI. just to save a bit of radius and also avoid other enemy bikes. That's half the battle with this basically. You know, if, if, if you can just do the basics and avoid most collisions, you'll be doing very well. So here's Deception left. You think it's going to be a right-hander after the last section, they've primed me well. But nope, it's a big left. And we've got a nice safe end clip there. This is another reason I advocate using both the D-pad and the face buttons to control your position. It gives you that little bit more control. Input coming up. That's a good one. And then we can get a far higher exit speed onto this straight. Now it's going to be a bit more concentration time coming up here. Apparently we've got a raid. Welcome in. Fantastic to have you here with Sega Crew. I'm just doing a playthrough of Super Hang On. We're halfway through the expert course. And then coming up very shortly, there's going to be a Sonic R relay race, so do stay tuned for that. Ah! Don't do that. <laughs> you see how it turns on the knife edge of this game? That one's a reasonably safe little clip because you've got just enough time to react before you whack into the lamppost. exceedingly well it's far from over because the last couple of sections of this are absolutely ridiculous. 
and coming up is going to be section 13 which I lovingly refer to as the Excella Circle because you've got this wonderful sweeping quartet of right-handers where in theory you can accelerate between them but it really takes a lot of courage to avoid getting thrown out. And if you just put one foot wrong it can really come back and bite you. Especially with the way the uh, super scaler is changing the position, the X position of the track at moments here, you can end up very easily running into lamp posts. So coming up the Excella Circle area, let's see what I can do with this. Got to avoid the lamp posts as well. I'm just letting go of B there to kind of float through. Put a big in clip. Ooh, that was lucky. Here's a dangerous lamp post coming up here. What's he done? I don't know, but he's dangerous. Keep away from him. Break, break, break. And the one thing about this game is this is the arcade mode. But original mode has got a thing where if you collide into people and if you collide into obstacles, it will damage your bike and it's a royal pain. So nobody has speedrun that yet, partly because you would have to do it on a console, but partly because it would take 12 hours, you know, it would just be so slow. But it basically takes the um, portions of game from this, like the pairs of stages, and remixes them into a different order. It would be an interesting challenge, maybe I'll do it in the future, but yeah. After this we have got Speed Canyon, which is the makeup time section. And that is going to be difficult because I'm going to have to do a lot of warping and warping is just when I tap the uh, direction button, tap the C button to change my collision position as much as I can to avoid wax. Because believe me, you can get a perfect run for the first 14 stages and then those two stages alone can kill your run if you just knock into a couple of bikes. You don't want that. Hey JKL, how are you doing? How is your stream? I know you're practicing for the uh, Game Gear race that's coming up on Sega Crew Channel soon as well. You see, that if I can avoid whacking too badly into these guys, I'm not going to lose so much speed. That was a bad one, that'll cost a second. One of the clever things they did in the design of this game as well, they've put the speedometer in the top right. It's not that easy to look at, but mercifully, they have given you a red flashing indicator when you're at turbo. You can just about see that in your peripheral vision. This is pretty good so far, though. There's going to be a guy coming up in the right-hand side, so I'm going to switch over and avoid him if I can. He's usually a lot of trouble. He's thrown me into these stumps a lot of times. I don't want that. I don't want splinters in my bum. And then for the final couple of sectors, I'm just going to get a little bit quieter and concentrate. Do forgive me if my commentary has been a little bit much or a little bit little. I haven't done too much of this before, but thank you very much for having me here on Sega Crew. It's been a joy. And just a reminder, I will be back tomorrow evening at 9 o'clock British Standard Time, 4pm EDT, with some lemmings, and then straight into Speedball 2. That's going to be a blast. I've been wanting to do that for a long time. Bit of a whack there, that's okay. And we've got some massive wide corners. Let's see if Kate bushes out for me today. Kidding, these two sectors alone can knock like seven seconds off your end game time. So these alone can cost you world record or a good time. It's it's psychologically it takes a bit of work to get used to that because you want to push a little bit. And then there are times you'll push and it won't come together. 
and there are times you'll be passive and everything will come together and you'll sort of regret it. That's not how to do it. <laughs> So, Wazirin, are you ready for the next part of Sega Olympics? Just let me know in the chat if you are. Oop! Ah, I couldn't avoid that oil barrel. Apparently my guy is from Texas on this bike here and he wants some oil to take home, but he's not going to be allowed to because there's no room on the bike. That's a shame. Pretty good run though, one crash. Super hang on for the Genesis. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Let me just see what the final time was. We finished with a lovely big score of 65 million. Thank you for the GG's, folks. Ten fifty, so that would be more like ten forty two. That's really good. Very pleased with that. So, I will post a link in a few moments in the chat to the bounty announcement for this game, which applies to the first course. I would love to see any and all of you pick it up just as a 12 hour challenge or as another run for your collection. Thank you very much for watching. Awazrim, are you ready to take back control with some Sonic on the SEGA channel? <laughs> 